Hello, everyone. My name is Yi Xiaodu. I'm a first year PhD student at Cornell University. And today I'm going to talk about high performance sparse linear algebra on HBM QDAP PGAs using HLS. Now, this work is done in collaboration with Yue Hu, Zhong Chunzhou, and Professor Zhu Zhang. A sparse linear algebra has a broad range of applications. For example, we can use it to solve a linear system of equations. It can be also used in the inference of compressed unit networks where the weight matrix is printed into a sparse matrix. It also plays a role in graph traversal such as breadth-verse search where the adjacency matrix is sparse. Before talking about the acceleration of sparse linear algebra, I would like to first introduce the characteristic of it by this example. It is a sparse matrix times a dense vector and I listed out the compute pattern of generating the first five elements of the output vector. This compute pattern exhibits a low compute to memory access ratio because in each line, there are only two operations but four memory accesses. And also each element in the matrix A is used only once. This leads to a situation called bandwidth bound, which means the performance of sparse linear algebra accelerators is limited by the memory bandwidth. Moreover, if you look at the access pattern to vector B, it is random, and there is also read after write dependencies. Random accesses and de carry dependencies also pose challenges to the accelerator design. So now we know the three major challenges of accelerating sparse linear algebra, which are bandwidth bound, random access, and carry dependency. Therefore, we propose high sparse, which is an SPMV accelerator to illustrate the best practices to tackle these challenges. The key ideas of high sparse are first leveraging HBM to get higher available memory bandwidth, and then co-designing the sparse matrix format and its accelerator architecture to better utilize the memory bandwidth, and finally implementing dynamically executing pipelines to deal with the random accesses and carry dependencies. And here is a little bit of background. There are lots of previous attempts of accelerating sparse linear algebra on FPGAs with DDR memory, but their performance is limited by the DDR bandwidth. On the other hand, HBM provides exceptional bandwidth which brings the potential of further acceleration. However, the high bandwidth provided by HBM relies on concurrent access to multiple memory channels. Therefore, we need to avoid channel conflicts to, map, to maximize the bandwidth utilization. Our solution is to co-design the matrix format and the accelerator architecture. For the matrix format, there's a commonly used one called compressed sparse rows or CSR for short. Unfortunately, CSR is not suitable for HBM acceleration. Here is an example of a four by four matrix accessed by two process engines, and there's the access pattern. Since CSR relies on the row pointer to denote the start location of each row, the PEs need to read the row pointer array before loading the actual data, which causes non-streaming access. Moreover, since rows in CSR are stored in contiguous memory locations, two PEs can access the same HBM channel at the same time, causing channel conflicts. On the contrary, our custom matrix format uses next row markers to get rid of the row pointer array and ensures full streaming access. We also store the rows cyclically in the HBM channels to prevent, to prevent channel conflicts. In this way, we can fully utilize the HBM bandwidth. As for the other side of the code design, here's our accelerator architecture. We further group eight PEs into one cluster to access HBM in a vectorized manner. Inside each cluster, we also have on-chip buffers for the input vector and the result vector to reduce the off-chip memory traffic. We also have a vector loader to load and feed the vector to the clusters and a result training unit to write the result back to HBM. There are 16 clusters in our system, so we have 128 PEs in total. Now let's talk about how to deal with the random access to the input vector. A straightforward way is to duplicate the input vector to every PE in the system. This approach guarantees no conflicts across PEs, but has a high demand of on-chip memory. Alternative ways to share the input vector among a set of PEs. It preserves an efficient use of on-chip memory, but we need to deal with bank conflicts. We take the latter approach since we have 128 PEs in total, so we want better scalability. Therefore, we need a shuffle unit to resolve bank conflicts by routing the requests from the PEs. Implementing the shuffle unit in HLS is not easy. Here's a counter example. When the design is pushed through the flow, 
HLS will assume the worst case traffic pattern and process all the input lines sequentially. If we have n input lines, the pipeline II will be n. This is because there's no arbitration logic in the code. In high sparse, we explicitly implement the arbitration logic and a rescinding mechanism to send the denied payloads back to the input of the arbiter so that we don't lose them. The corresponding core is highlight, the corresponding code is highlighted in blue. In this way, we can fully pipeline the shuffle unit and the bank conflicts are resolved in a dynamic way. The last problem we need to take care of is the read of the red carrier dependencies. And as this piece of code shows, we need to accumulate over the output buffer, which can take multiple cycles to read and write. As a result, HLS will increase the II to be the sum of the read latency and the write latency to pull apart the memory dependencies. If we are doing RTL, we might want to implement data forwarding to resolve it, but implementing data forwarding in HLS is not easy because the pipeline registers are not visible in the code. Uh, in high sparse, we use a data structure called the in-flight write queue to store the writes issued in the past iterations. The IFWQ is made of a shift register, which will be updated once a write is issued. Therefore, this queue acts exactly like the pipeline registers, so we can use the information stored in this queue to implement data forwarding. Okay, let's move on to the implementation. We implemented high sparse on an Exalix LVU 280 FPGA with 16 HPM channels for the sparse matrix, two HPM channels for the input and result vector. So these 18 HPM channels give us a total bandwidth of 258 gigabytes per second. We have a four megabyte result buffer in total, which is given by 256 kilobytes per cluster times 16 clusters. And we have a 128 kilobytes vector buffer. Finally, we have eight PEs per cluster and 128 PEs in total. The entire design is completely written in HLS and runs at 237 megahertz. Of course, that's with the help of front planning. I will not go to, into the details of the front planning due to the interest of time, but we have a dedicated section of it in, in our paper. So please check it out if you're interested. This table shows the resourcealization of high sparse. As for the results, we compared HighSparse with our GPU baseline, which is the NVIDIA CoolSparse library. And HighSparse has the same throughput as CoolSparse, but is around 2x more bandwidth efficient and 3.7x more energy efficient. We also compared HighSparse with previous work on PGAs. The two baselines are Thunder GP targeting a DDR PGA and the Vitus Sparse library running on the same platform as HighSparse. So we are 2.2 faster than Thunder GP and 1.4x faster than Vitus Sparse library. Finally, please also let me to introduce some latest results. We scaled up HighSparse to 22 HBM channels, which provide 315 gigabytes per second bandwidth. This 22 channel design runs at 231 MHz, pretty, pretty much the same as the 18 channel one. And here is the use comparison of the resource utilization. So with this 1.22x more bandwidth, we enjoy up to 1.38x speed up. So this speed up is more than 1.2 because the buffer size is also scaled up accordingly, as you can see in the resource utilization table. To conclude, we identify the challenges of accelerating sparse linear algebra on FPGAs with HPM, and we also present techniques to tackle these challenges using SPMV as a case study. And finally, high sparse is open source and is available on GitHub. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you.